So when you stand in the middle of the city and you're hearing the trucks banging and the people screaming or whatever, you're effectively listening to, to energy that is no longer usable. Discovery Channel, I think they found our website. Yeah, they saw the films we were making and they wanted to, to, to raise the profile of South Africa and, and Africa in general. They commissioned a series of short films. Yeah, we were lucky enough to be one of them. Um, one of the challenges that have been uh, for the shoot is be getting the exact time that the camera should do a full rotation. Uh, we had to calculate how long it would be. It would be six hours. That was six hours and 18 minutes. Um, we had to divide that by how many frames we were shooting, which is 1,450. And that gave us an overall time of how long the camera should rotate. We needed to shoot every frame for, ex for a period of three seconds. So what this does is that when the artists move in the frame, he or she, they become blurred because they're not, they're not standing in one place for a very long time. So in this, in, on the final product, you don't see a, a clear, clear image of the artist. And that's why they're also dressed in white, so that they merge in with the background. Each person that, that is working on this is somebody that I've kind of always had a lot of respect for. And then now, lately, there's a few more people that I've always just thought, yes, it would be really cool to, to include. We chose to use the theme of the environment because I think all of us as a group sort of have realized that that is something that's, that's very precious to us. Uh, they don't, animals don't have a choice about what we've done to the environment. And um, yeah, I think we kind of messed it up. I think we kind of have some kind of responsibility to push this theme into creative projects. I came without a plan. I thought I'd just uh, see what develops organically. I went with the fact that children aren't getting out enough and children are playing, well, he's playing his PlayStation and that makes him more happy than going outside. And and then it moves on as, as the whale splashes. Um, it turns into this kind of wild, um, out of control, oil river and the clients are going to rain more bottle caps and eventually create a tree and then it, like sort of things turn into things and th it's kind of a world of everything living together and i don't know i guess like a just the way the world is one big creature with a, another thousand on top of it there's no way we can outlast the earth Basically, noise is waste. You're effectively listening to, to energy that is waste. no longer usable. It's just dissipated and is, and is a total waste of, of a lot of things. So that's sort of what we sort of thought we'd make, is a machine that kind of is exaggerating the noise and the waste unless someone comes up to it and tries to calm it down, and then it continues to go out of control. We had some ideas and like, little um, sort of programs and stuff we wanted to play with and but a lot of it's actually just happened here um, I like the way that it hasn't necessarily been interpreted so literally it's allowed us to kind of explore the more intrinsic feelings towards towards the whole subject which I think are a lot more honest than constructing a kind of story. It's quite interesting that we can, that, that, that this, this, this question has such depth, you know, it has so many ways that people engage with it and, on, and people's emotions towards it change all the time, you know, but ultimately it is something that is going to define who we are in the future. It's definitely a turning point, the next 20 years are definitely, definitely uh, sink or swim, man. Thank you.